Hey everyone, this is Nicole from KenHub, and in this video, we're going to look at the blood supply to the trunk. So in this tutorial, we're going to cover the thoracic aorta, the celiac trunk, the superior mesenteric artery, the inferior mesenteric artery, and the common iliac arteries and their associated branches. But before we begin, we're just going to have a bit of a talk through the circulatory system. So in this image, we're having a look at the heart and some of the major arteries making up the circulatory system. The circulatory system is the main transportation system of the body, and it's made up of three types of vessels, arteries, veins, and capillaries. The vessels are filled with blood, carrying gases, nutrients and wastes. And in this tutorial, we're only going to be looking at the arteries. The arteries being the vessels that bring oxygenated blood away from the heart to the rest of the body. So let's just take a couple of minutes to discuss briefly how we're going to talk about blood flow today. So when studying anatomy, it's always better to consider the relationships between structures rather than memorizing them individually, as memorizing them individually probably will take a really long time and most likely it'll be really difficult to remember. So it's better that we talk about relationships and throughout this tutorial, we're going to follow the pattern of blood flow from one artery to the next to show how blood cells move through the body after they leave the heart. We're going to start, of course, with the largest artery in the body, which is the aorta, as oxygenated blood leaves the heart through the aorta to enter systemic circulation. The aorta is divided into three parts, the ascending aorta, the arch of the aorta, and the descending or the thoracic aorta. And now we're going to look at them in a little bit more detail. We're going to begin, of course, with the ascending aorta, which you can now see highlighted in green. The ascending aorta receives richly oxygenated blood from the left ventricle of the heart, transmitted by the appropriately named aortic valve. And in this illustration, we can also see most of the other great vessels arriving or departing from the heart. For example, the inferior and superior vena cavae, the pulmonary trunk, and the left pulmonary veins. Removing the great vessels for a moment, we can now see the initial portion of the ascending aorta, just superior to the aortic valve. And from here, two small yet extremely important arteries are given off, and these are known as the right and left coronary arteries. The left coronary artery usually arises immediately superior to the left coronary leaflet of the aortic valve. And it continues as the left coronary artery proper, only for about 10 to 15 millimetres before dividing into its two primary branches, a circumflex branch and an anterior interventricular branch. The circumflex branch follows a route along the left part of the coronary sulcus, wrapping around the circumference of the heart to its posterior aspect. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and Atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full length video and master anatomy.